President John F. Kennedy arrived in Huntsville, Alabama, the rocket city, in early 1961 to meet the people who were building the moon rocket. The President had committed the United States to an all-out race against the Russians to send astronauts to the moon and return them safely to the Earth. That trip to the moon would start in Huntsville, Alabama at Warner Van Brown's rocket factory, which would later be known as the Marshall Space Flight Center. I'm Ed Buckby, a former NASA public affairs officer, and that's our story. Warner Von Braun, the Rocket Man. Rocket scientist Warner Von Braun came from Germany to the U.S. after World War II. He was in the rocket business in Germany, having developed the V-2 rocket that brought havoc to England during the war. Dorette Slitz was Von Braun's secretary in Germany. He wanted to devote his life to the work and development of powerful rockets with a guidance system to one day, you know, going into space and to the moon. It was his dream already from the beginning on, but uh, nobody was actually believing that. When I was 17 years old, I had no doubt that man would land on the moon in my lifetime. But of course, at the age of 17, I had no idea what it would really take to do it, nor did I know what a billion dollars was. Although he wanted to explore space, he was under contract to the United States Army to begin developing the Army's stable of missiles for defense. In 1958, Von Braun's team of Germans and Americans launched Explorer 1, the free world's first satellite, propelling this country into space for the first time. Shortly thereafter, the U.S. was shocked when the Soviet Union launched a man into space. The Von Braun team responded by launching Alan B. Shepard, Jr., America's first astronaut to the edge of space. Three weeks later, President Kennedy committed us to landing a man on the moon before the end of the decade. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Frank Williams served as an assistant to Von Braun in Huntsville and also worked closely with him on plans for future space travel at NASA headquarters in Washington. Well, when that happened, Von Braun had a, was like having a ton lifted off of his shoulders. I'm out of the, the military business. I'm back in civilian space flight. It's peaceful uses of outer space. That was a big, big load off of his and the rest of the teams because there was a stigma mm -hmm. there, which I found out about later. But the, the, you could tell that was a big, big point in his life. It would take a rocket of immense size, power, and accuracy to launch men to the moon. Von Braun would become the father of the moon rocket, the world's largest and most powerful rocket, the Saturn V. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off on a and when he came back, walked in the office with a big grin on his face and said, mission accomplished. <laughs> One of the greatest, if not the greatest, highlight. But I must say, I was just as happy when he, when he went back home. Because uh, uh, during these early Apollo flights, you, you just walk around with a lump in your throat, you know, for a couple of days. Who was this man, Von Braun? Rocket scientist, visionary, space advocate, crusader for space. To learn more about him, we talked with the men and women who worked closely with Von Braun during this exciting time for the race to the moon.